In this video, I'll show you how to create a line art animation like these flowers. I'll cover how to animate lines drawing in with trim paths, how to maintain the stroke weight when scaling a layer, and how to attach a layer to the end of another layer's trim path. These flowers are part of the class project for my class Smooth Moves, Better Motion with Animation Curves in the Graph Editor. This class is for anyone looking to level up their motion design skills by mastering the graph editor. I cover animation fundamentals, how to analyze motion, and how to read and manipulate the graph editor to create realistic, interesting, and professional looking animations. You can check out the class on my website or on Skillshare. Now let's get into the tutorial. But first, you can download the project file for these flowers with the link below this video. And you can follow along with me using my flower design. If you want to create your own design in Adobe Illustrator, just make sure that you're using shapes made of strokes with no fill for anything you want to have drawing in. It's also important to separate your layers into each piece that will be animated and of course label your layers. When you import your Illustrator file into After Effects, make sure that you choose Import As Composition Retain Layer Sizes. Then you'll need to select all of the Illustrator layers right click and go to create shapes from vector layer and you can delete the original illustrator layers now you should be in the same starting point as i am first let's animate the stem drawing in and because this is created so that it's just a stroke we can use a trim path animation to animate this in what i'm going to do to create a trim path is toggle down the layer and go over to this little triangle next to add and then choose trim paths. And now I can toggle down where it says trim paths and animate these start or end values to animate the line drawing in. So let's go to about one second on the timeline and set the end value to be at 100%. So this is the final state of this stem. And then I'll go back to the start of the timeline and animate the end value all the way off so that it's 0%. And now this will make the line draw in but it's drawing in the wrong way. I want it to draw from the ground up. So there's an easy fix for that. If you go under stem and toggle that down next to where it says path one, you can flip the direction of the path with these little arrows. So I'm gonna reverse it with that arrow and now it'll draw in from the ground up. And of course we wanna make this animation more interesting than linear. So let's just add easy ease as a starting point. And I'm gonna go into the graph editor so I'm gonna go to the speed graph. Let's adjust the handle so that the spacing on this animation is a little bit more dramatic than easy ease. So I'm gonna pull out this handle to ease out of this keyframe a little bit more. And I'm gonna pull this handle on the second keyframe to ease into this one a little bit more. So I'll just kind of get the highest point of the graph where the speed is the fastest right in the middle of this animation. So let's look at what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks good. It's nice and slow at the beginning, really fast in the middle, which kind of works out nicely with how this line is curving. So I'm happy with that and let's move on. The next thing that I want to do is animate this other stem on. So this branch that comes off of the main stem. So what I can do is actually just copy these keyframes on the trim path. So they're called end for the end of the trim path. I can just do command C and then select the branch and hit command V and then just hit U to see those keyframes. So I don't want the branch to start animating in at the same time as the stem. I want the stem to reach where this branch branches off and then start animating. So maybe about here, I want this to start animating in. Because this branch is a shorter line to draw in, we should adjust the timing so it's about the same as the main stem. So I think something like that looks pretty good. And because I just copied and pasted the keyframes, these are gonna have the same exact easing values already applied. Now let's animate the leaf. So we'll start with leaf number one here. And the first thing that I need to do is make sure that the anchor point is where I want this leaf to rotate around because I'm gonna have it slightly rotate as it scales in. So I'm gonna use the pan behind tool, Y on the keyboard, and then just snap that into place. I want to animate this leaf in with the scale property. But if I were to scale this just with the regular old scale property, 
you can see that when I scale it, the stroke is getting really small. And I don't think that looks very good because it's not consistent with the scales of all of the rest of the drawing. So it would be better if the stroke just stayed the same weight the whole time, even as the leaf itself is scaling. So there's actually an easy way that we can do that. We just need to do a little bit of rearranging within the layer. So if you toggle down this layer, under contents, there should be two groups. One is just for the main leaf, and the other is for the line that draws through the leaf. So what we need to do is just toggle down both groups, and each one has a path with a stroke. So first let me show you how we need to rearrange, and then I'll explain why this works. So I'm going to take the path from group 2 and just bring it up into group 1. And then I'm going to just delete group 2. And it didn't delete anything in my shape because I already moved the path up to group 1. And now what we can do is take this stroke and move it out outside of this group 1. So I actually want the group 1 to be on top and then the stroke 1 to be on bottom. Within the group, we have a set of transform properties, which are going to be really similar to the main transform properties. But if we animate the scale within this group of transform properties, you can see that the stroke is always going to maintain that same width. And that's because of the layer order here. So the stroke is applied after this transform is applied, so the stroke always stays the same. But if we were to scale with this stroke that's after the stroke is applied, then the stroke is also scaling. So we need to make sure that we're using transform group one and the scale underneath that. But also notice that when this is scaling, it's not scaling from the anchor point for the entire layer because there's also another anchor point. So what we need to do is just use the pan behind tool again, take this anchor point, you'll see it when you have group one selected on the leaf. So you wanna move this anchor point up into that corner. And unfortunately for this kind of anchor point, the command snapping trick does not work. So we just wanna get that as close to the corner as possible. So make sure you go back to the selection tool with V and then at like 20 frames, let's have this scaled all the way in. So I'll set a scale value for 100%. And then going back to the beginning of the timeline, let's just scale this down to zero. And now we need to adjust when this happens so that it happens after the branch is already there for it to grow off of. So something like that should work. And let's also add a rotation on this. So we can just use the main rotation because we want to rotate the whole thing. It's not going to affect the stroke width or anything. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the rotation to be zero right here where the scale property finishes animating. And then back at the start of the timeline, I'm just going to rotate this, but I can't actually see what I'm doing if I'm at the beginning because the scale is zero. So I'm just going to go a little bit forward in time so I can see the leaf and I'm just going to rotate it. So it's kind of more parallel to the branch. And then we can just drag this keyframe to the very start of the timeline. And that way it'll just kind of rotate down slightly as it's growing in. And now let's get rid of these linear keyframes. So I'm just going to select them, do F9 for easy ease. And now with both sets of keyframes selected, I'm going to go into the graph editor and we can actually see the scale and rotation animation curves at once. And this is the speed graph. And one reason why the speed graph can be helpful is because I can adjust these together, even though one is above the x-axis and one is below, I can adjust these together and easily adjust the spacing. So this way it's gonna kinda go ease out pretty quickly. So just a little bit of ease and then go pretty quick and then a big ease into its final value. So I think this animation is gonna be good and let's just play back what we have so far. Let's move on to animate the flower. So first I'm just going to move the anchor point in case I want to rotate this. So I'll just use Y on the keyboard and put this right at the base of the flower. And then let's go into the flower and toggle down all of these groups. So there's a group for each petal and inside there's a path and a stroke. So if I were to use that same transform group property to scale the petal, you can see that the stroke is not actually being maintained. 
And that's because the stroke is applied before the transform property. So what I need to do is move one of the strokes out below all of the other groups, and then I can just delete the stroke within each group. So there's gonna be just the path in the group for all three groups, and then the stroke is gonna be applied at the very end. So now I can use the transform group one scale property to scale these petals. But first I need to adjust their individual anchor points. So using the pan behind tool, I'm just gonna move all of the anchor points into this corner. All right, so now I can set my scale properties. So let's say that this takes 20 frames and I'm just gonna set the scale to be 100 for each one of these petals. And then go back to the start of the timeline and set these down to zero. So now each one is gonna be scaling up. And one thing I can do to make this a little bit more interesting is to rotate each one individually. So let's just set a rotation keyframe for when the scale value finishes animating. So that'll be zero rotation here. And then going back to the start, well, let's go back to about right here and then we'll adjust. So I'm gonna bring the third petal or group three petal so that it kind of more overlaps with the other petal. And then on group two, we can also do that same thing so it overlaps a little bit more. So something like that. So it's kind of like the flowers opening up. And I guess we actually don't need to rotate group one in the middle. So we can just delete that. I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard just to condense my layer to just the keyframes. And let's move these rotation keyframes back to the start of the layer. And I'm gonna select all of these at once add easy ease, and then let's go into the graph editor. I think I want this flower to open quickly and then kind of ease into its final position. So I'm going to click and drag over the keyframe to make sure that I get the handles for all of these properties that have animation. And I'm just gonna drag this handle back a tiny bit and then remember click and drag to select all of the handles here and then drag this one this way. So let's see what this looks like. I think that'll do. So now we can just adjust the timing of this to make sure that it comes in after the stem is already animated in. At this point, we've gone over how to animate the stems and branches with trim paths and how to animate the leaves and the petals of the flower with rotation and scale properties. So you have everything you need to know to apply this to all of the other elements within this flower and within the other flowers. These little buds right here are just animated, the circles with the scale property, and the branches are animated with trim paths. So go ahead and apply what you know to all of the other elements of these flowers. I'm skipping ahead to where I have this flower arrangement all animated in to show you a way to make it even better. Notice how the stem animates all the way in and then the flower starts animating in. One way we could make this animation even better is to have the flower start blooming as the stem is still growing. But in order to do that, we would need to attach the flower to the end of the stem. And since the end of the stem is kind of a moving target because it's animating, we have to set up a special system so that this will all work. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing that I need to do is go up to Window and then down where all of your plugins live or scripts, anything that you've downloaded into After Effects, there's gonna be a native script that comes with After Effects and it's called Create Nulls from Paths. So you wanna just click on that to open it up. It might open in its own window or it might already have found a panel. So I'm just gonna open this so we can see it. And then I wanna go down into the stem of this flower. So I'm gonna to toggle down and down again. And then next to stem, I'm gonna to toggle down where it says path so that we have the path that has a stopwatch next to it. With that path selected, I'm gonna go up to my Create Nulls from Path script and choose Trace Path. You can see that's added this purple box, which is a null object. And if you scroll through your timeline, you can see that that is already animated. So I'm just gonna hit U on the keyboard to see those keyframes that it's set. So it has this progress value that's a percentage. We can actually delete these keyframes by just unclicking the stopwatch. So what we wanna do is 
have the progress value always be the same as the end of the trim path. So we've already animated that with the end value here. So I'm just going to take this progress and take the pick whip next to it and drag that onto the end value. So if we play this back, you can see that that's actually gonna go in the opposite direction. And that's because we had to switch the direction of the path. So we can fix it on this null as well. So what we need to do is just toggle down next to where it says progress, and it's already created this expression that connects it to the end. This was created when we parented this value to the end value. And so what we need to do is just flip this value so it's the opposite, so that it attaches to the null properly. So it's very easy. All we need to do is go to the beginning of this expression and do 100 minus. And then it should look just like that. And now that null object is always going to be attached to the end of the path. So now we can attach our flower to this null object so that it can be attached to the end of the stem at all times, even when the stem is animating in. So I'm just going to go to this flower. I'm going to slide this flower to the left so that it starts animating before the stem finishes animating in. But we actually need to go back when the animation is all finished and this null is aligned with the end of the flower. And now we want to parent this flower to this null. And if we go and play this now, you can see that the flower starts animating in and it sticks to the end of that stem as the stem is animating in. And you could do the same thing with this flower and you just need to set up this trace path for this branch here. Now you have everything you need to know to apply these techniques to the rest of the flowers or to your own illustrations. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy animating.